must you play that thing before breakfast? I'm just making sure it's in tune. Why? It never seems to make any difference. I'm providing the musical accompaniment at the campfire tonight. Surely you're not going to that kook out under the stars thing? Of course I am. It's the highlight of the week. And it's in the brochure. So is regular lynchings. <laughs> we can't have lynchings till I get that jail built. Is it that you've got all the time in the world to build a jail and you can't find five minutes to build me a patio? Are you ready to come over for breakfast? I thought we'd have it here this morning. Make a change from all that bacon, egg, sausage, tomatoes and beans. What will? Lemon juice and vitamin tablets. Eh? <laughs> Do the world of good to cleanse your system and you need supplements at your age. I'm younger than you are. Two weeks doesn't count. <laughs> Where's the sugar? Don't be ridiculous, Thomas. Sugar can do you untold harm. Think of something pleasant and get it down. <laughs> Eggs, bacon, sausages, tomatoes. <laughs> Yuck. I've been thinking, as I'm not having a gazebo, a fountain would be rather nice. There's nothing more relaxing than the sound of splashing water. You get that from the gents. <laughs> Don't be crude, Thomas. It was partly the sound of the public toilets I wanted to conceal. Well, Percy will never agree to a fountain, Chuck, and you know it. Look, why don't you come to cookout? You must be joking. Sitting in a damp field, eating fried food with a load of part-time cowboys from Chesterfield. <laughs> oh, thank you. Well, suit yourself. I must nip over to saloon. I want to have a word with Jessie about... Um... Bacon sandwiches. Oh, I couldn't eat another thing after those delicious tablets, lovey. <laughs> no, I want to make sure I'm on the list for the cookout. Percy's anticipating a big demand. <laughs> make sure you get all the names down, Cyril. There'll be a bit of a rush, but just take your time. Right, no problem, Jason. Right. Could I borrow your pen? Oh. All I want to know is how many are going and how many are staying. The entire purpose of the announcement I'm about to make is to establish just that. Could I be attention there, please, folks? Uh, give it down, boys. Okay, Jesse, let's hear from you. Thanks, kid. Well, now, partners, as you know, Thursday night at Apache Wells is always that little bit special. We go in to have a night out under the stars with real western chow cooked over a mosquito fire or similar. <laughs> I was about to say, the evening starts with us all leaving on one of Bachelor's Deluxe Cena Cruiser Coaches. After a fascinating and exciting journey into the unknown, we arrive at our destination by sundown. A succulent, authentic Western meal will be prepared over a crackling campfire. <laughs> to be followed by a series of Western traditional style entertainments. After which we all snuggle down under our single blanket for a night under the stars. Percy, you haven't mentioned price. Oh, uh, this 12-hour Western experience of a lifetime will cost you a very reasonable, now wait for it, £1.50. <laughs> one at a time, please, don't rush. Just give me your name and bunkhouse number one at a time. Could I ask a question? Yes. What is it, Maverick? How do we get back, Jesse? I forgot to mention another highlight. We'll be trekking back through Indian territory. How much territory have the pesky varmints got? As the crow flies, four and three quarter miles. Might be a long way to go for breakfast. <laughs> the miles carrying all the cook out things. And the blankets. And pyjamas. Couldn't bachelors deluxe scenic cruiser coaches bring all stuff back? I'm afraid not. Frank's got the St. Winifred's primary school bus run in the morning. Could I inquire what weather forecast is before I commit myself? Yes, Billy? A low trough over the Atlantic will move in space. <laughs> Could we just have your name so we can get on? What will be free? As I said previous, authentic Western chap. Aye, but what? Hamburgers, mushy peas, sliced bread and butter. Hamburgers? But what's wrong with hamburgers? It's now more American than hamburgers. Well, what happened to the pork and beans? I haven't got enough beans for this lot. We've gone through six catering tins already. Uh, uh, could I just mention that I will be personally responsible for the musical aspects of the campfire entertainment, accompanied by my good friend, Slim, oh, master yeah. of the harmonica. Yeah. What about beds, Jesse? 
Beds? What beds? What we snuggle down on? The good earth, Clem. No mattresses? Need a saddle to rest your head on, Jesse. Well, the old's got to carry them. Well, let, let's just start again, shall we? We shall be leaving on a luxury coach. But not coming back in it. Right. We shall be serving authentic Western chap. With mushy peas. Right. There'll be no beds and no mattresses. All weather forecast by the look of it. <laughs> Can you honestly imagine the man with no name snuggling down... His name's Clint Eastwood, Jesse. <laughs> Shut up, Cyril. Can you imagine the man with no name snuggling down for a night under the stars on a three-foot divan bed after he's checked the weather forecast? <laughs> I'm a going, Jesse. Good lad. I'm coming too. Well done, kid. I'm a going too, Jesse. That's three. <laughs> oh, uh, did I mention the raffle? Oh, no, no. A raffle is where well, let's say. What are the prizes? I'm glad you asked me that. The third prize is a giant carton of orange eye. The second prize Two is a giant carton of orange <laughs> eye. <laughs> What's the top prize, Jesse? Top prize. Now, wait for it is a genuine replica, Sheriff Star. Oh, I can't be in. Can I buy a raffle oh, ticket now? Hold on, Brett, hold on. How much are they? 10p. I'm coming. Me good too. Lad. Count me in. Write them down, Cyril. Write them down quickly in case they change their minds. There's a good lad. I was forgotten about you collecting dead matches. Can't seem to get enough of them these days. What are you working on now? Manchester Town Hall. <laughs> Entirely built of matchsticks? Aye. Wow. How long will it take you? Four, five, maybe six years. Amazing. <laughs> More fun than watching Russell Arty. <laughs> hey, are you going to have a whittle? <laughs> Usually have a good long whittle on a Thursday. <laughs> I just can't seem to get the hang of it. <laughs> just needs practice. Oh, I practice every day. Cigarette rolling and ten minutes whittling. <laughs> well, look, have some whittling wood, get your knife out, and do what I do, son. <laughs> Known Jesse Long, have you? Oh, good few years. I rode with the North Shore Gunslingers. Oh, great bunch. Worked in Blackpool, did you? Sanitary Software Limited. <laughs> <I was a rep. laughs> what were you selling? Oh, toilet rolls, all that stuff. <laughs> Not much fun in that, is it? Nah. I was damn glad when I got made redundant. <laughs> Demand fall off. <laughs> we got taken over by bathroom stationery. So I decided to become a stuntman. <coughs> Lots of acting experience with Stanley Road thespians and a natural ability to fall. I thought film and TV would grab me. I wrote to them all. MGM, Warner Brothers, Channel TV. Always enclosed a stamped addressed envelope. What happened? Nothing. Oh, tell a lie. Radio Scotland asked me how much I'd charge to drop from Fourth Bridge into a rowing boat. But, well, I think I overpriced myself. What did you ask? Eight quid plus expenses. <laughs> I didn't hear any more after that. Mm. So, Jesse took you on here, did he? Oh, best job in the world. Only full-time cowboy come stuntman in the entire country. Oh, he even let me put my redundancy money into the company. That was nice of him. Oh, pure gold are Jesse and Isabel. Lovely people. I'd do anything for him. Cleaning, sweeping, dusting, throwing myself off roofs, anything. How's it coming on now? Oh, like this. How'd you manage to do that in a couple of minutes? <laughs> two minutes? It takes two hours to make one of these, lad. Oh, magic. 
Well, it just needs a bit more practice. <laughs> You hear that, Jesse? Early this year. Aye. <laughs> oh, it's you, kid. Very nice. Me and Butch are just riding into town to get some supplies for the cookouts. How many are going? I just told you, me and Butch. <laughs> oh, you, you mean for the cookout? Yeah. Besides us lot? Yeah. Four. Oh, I bet. Get your brush and sweep that rubbish up, will you? There's a good lad. Now listen, Cyril. I don't want to see you laughing about the talk. Here you are, you can make use of this, Bert. Make an ideal toothpick. Yeah. Hey, ain't it good? I've always wanted an uncarved toothpick. <laughs> Oh, no, soon get through this lot. Can I ask what they're for? Manchester Town Hall. Oh, yeah, of course, I should have known. <laughs> oh, hi, Dad. Did you get the washing up liquid? Nobody said anything about washing up liquid. All we got was beans. Eight dozen tins. Just enough to keep us going till Saturday. What's up with the kid? He's working on Manchester Town Hall. I think he's a bit bored. Bored? Why don't you show him a collection of genuine Western relics, Jesse? That'll excite him. I'd have thought striking matches would be more exciting. Hey, kid! <laughs> Jesse's gonna give you a special private preview of his collection. Oh, great. You'll not believe your eyes, kid. It's the most fantastic collection you ever did see. Did you say that again? I've seen it a hundred times and I always find it totally fascinating. Personally, I'd rather shift boxes of beans. <laughs> How about this? Actual feather once worn by Sitting Bull. All right, Butch. All right, I can tell him. And this, that's the feather he used to sign the, the treaty, treaty with the Sioux in 1885. <laughs> wow. You'll not believe this, kid. But this is an actual button of the shirt of Wyatt Earp. <laughs> Look, lad, if you want to show my collection, just say so. Oh, no, Jesse, I'm, I'm sorry. I just get carried away when I see it. All right. Now listen, kid. This bottle once contained medicine personally prescribed by Doc, Doc Holliday. <laughs> and this little bit of neckerchief was once worn by... You'll never, ever guess. Billy the Kid! No, <laughs> I'll not tell you again! <laughs> On the pride of the collection. A horseshoe. This is the very best part. Sorry. That looks real special, that. It should do. It's one of the actual horseshoes worn by Thunderbird. <laughs> An Indian wearing horseshoes? <laughs> no. No, a horse. But a very special horse. How special? Oh, tell him, Jesse, tell him. Only the first horse used to inaugurate the Pony Express. Isn't that unbelievable? Sure is. That's real unbelievable. <laughs> Percy, I think Bacchus and Luke's scenic cruiser coaches arrived. Oh, blast. I was just getting to the really good stuff and all, kid. Maybe later. Yes? Hey, Butch, will you do me a favour? Will you go and help Isabel to load the coach up? And I'll round the rest of the fellows up and we can be off. I load up the beans personal, Jesse. I'm real grateful for the privilege of you showing me your relics there, It's a considerable Jesse. pleasure, kid. Are you looking forward to the cookout? Oh, you betcha. Right. Let's ride, partner. We'll make camp here. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Steady, lad. 
Put them down over there. Yeah. Lovely spot you found by her, Jesse. True virgin wilderness. And so on the other road, too. <laughs> Put the bedrolls over there by the chuck boxes. And just make sure that no steers haven't passed this way. <laughs> right on, Jesse. Have you brought your blaster? Aye. And the sound effects tape? Aye. Good. Now let's get a fire going. Would everyone gather up as much kindling and wood as they can, please? There's uh, plenty of it about. Can I use my chopper, Jesse? <laughs> I, <will do. laughs> I wonder if there's any mosquito wood about. Where do you want tripod setting up? Do right there, kid. Oh. One thing I never worked out. What's that? How they managed to carry all this stuff in two saddlebags. <laughs> I've often wondered how they got two full suits, a spare Stetson, and never even got them creased. Oh, must have just torted along a flat iron as well. <laughs> right, thank you, partners. That should be sufficient. Uh, <clears throat> I'm sure that'll be sufficient. But you'll have to chop up your log a bit smaller. Smaller? This we're building a, a campfire, not a log cabin. Well, we've got an axe. Use your bowie knife. <sighs> uh, now, look. Thanks. That really is enough wood now. There's tons of wood out there, Jesse. Can I get some more? Not right now, Butch. We'll try and manage with a little bit we've got here. Oh, all right. <laughs> Shall I light the fire? I was just going to do that. I light the fire for my mum every morning. Always have a cheery blaze when she gets up. Just... Bring her some kidney over here. Plenty of newspaper baubles, two bundles of firewood, and a sprinkle of sugar, and you'll have a lovely fire in no time. Give it here. Thank you. Sugar, Jesse. Oh. No! Bert, there's a can of paraffin in the small car. Give us it here, will you? We're ready to move the tripod over when you're Not ready. Not just Jesse. now, kid. to jug made coffee. This sure smells delicious. Give us a hand with the victuals, Bert. Ah. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> so funny sideways, but I was on. <laughs> what have you done now? <laughs> well, the handle was too hot then. Sorry. Never happened like that in the movies. No harm done, Butch. The fire will soon pick up. Shall I pile more wood on? No. Have you found that pork yet, Bert? We really have import, Jesse. Yep. And beans. Oh. Oh. What's all this? Isabel said she was giving us pork. Oh, they definitely pork, Jesse. It's a strong label. Lovely. Get them in the pan right off. Must be heated up by now. What happened then? They're supposed to sit there and sizzle gently. I reckon that skillet's a mite too hot. Find it with your Stetson, Jesse. Good idea. Same as going on a cookout, but this oh. hot pot will mm. stick to your ribs. Oh. There's treacle sponge and custard to follow. Oh. That lot back of the wells will kick themselves when they find out what they've been missing. I've said it before and I'll say it again. They certainly knew how to eat well out west. I've never had crunchy sausages before. <laughs> they are nice. Surprised they don't do a black sausage flavoured crisp. Just make a fortune. Well, folks, time's a-wasting. 
I was thinking of giving you a little entertainment with a display of my whip cracking skills. Oh, oh God, not whip cracking. But the light just ain't good enough for the total precision needed. Perhaps we can find another simple Western amusement to mutually enjoy. Rope spinning? A few fancy falls? Little pistol twirling? Look no further, folks. Slim, I reckon that's our cue. A one, a two, a three, two, one. Western fanatics won't accept any entertainment that isn't traditional. Well, Mum, it doesn't come any more traditional than this. Everyone ready again? Aye. Eyes down for a full ounce. <laughs> All the threes, 33. Aye. End of the line, 89. Well, I don't know about you folks, but I'm going to hit the hay. Ready your blankets and get your heads out. Well, I'm plumb tuckered out. How about a quick game of ice spy? <laughs> Letting an early night makes a lot of sense. We've had enough excitement for one day. And we've got a long trek ahead of us at first light. Isn't it marvellous? Just a little idea to add a certain magic to the evening. Perfect, Jesse. Just perfect. It would have been nicer if a few more had come. Then we could have had a bigger fire. No, no, I meant we, uh, we haven't taken enough to cover expenses. Still, what's money compared with all this? Good food, good friends, good fire. The smell of the prairie and the stars shining through a clear sky. That's what it's all about, son. Oh. You know what, Jesse? I'm going to keep this all my life. A souvenir of the best time I ever did have. I might even start my own collection with it. It's a good rock, is that? It's well worth keeping. I think I put it in a shoe box, just like you was. It'll look good in a shoe box, will that? Well, well, see you in the morning. I'll be right here, Jesse. Night, night. I'd have a little more hot water for my herbal tea. I don't know how anyone can drink herbs. What's it taste like? Oh, it's quite delicious. Ooh, sage and thyme. Lovely in turkey, but in tea. <laughs> yes, well, you wouldn't know anything about it, would you? Do you think I might have it now? <laughs> Any sign of them yet? Oh, no, but they shouldn't be long. Are you sure that's all you're having? Oh, it's for my nerves. <laughs> I don't know how you keep so calm. I'm always worried sick when I don't know where Thomas is. Especially when he's out all night. 
But I know where Percy is. Where? With your Tom. <laughs> that was unusually quick. I suppose waitressing comes as second nature to you, being born into the trade, so to speak. I don't intend to be a waitress all my life. Really? It may surprise you to know, Mrs. Henderson, that I am a fellow co-director of Apache Wells Lanks Limited UK Division, and that once I have completed my training, I shall more than like as not accept a position as receptionist in what is reputedly the finest hotel in Manchester. Damp this morning. Well, what have you come in here for, messing up my clean floor? And I suppose now you'll be wanting breakfast. We had a lovely time, didn't we? Slept like a log. Jesse cooks a mean sausage, real pretty colours. <laughs> oh, go on, sit down. Hi, precious. I'm back. And about time, too. Spend all night enjoying yourself. Leave me here on my own, never thought of what I want to do. Then you turn up looking like something the cat dragged in, expecting sympathy. You know what I really want to do? What? Iron my shirt before the fringe starts shrinking. <laughs> well, you came up trumps again, Jess. Aye. Well, I was out of pocket on that one, Cyril. Frank Bachelor charged me full whack, even though there was 17 empty seats on the coach. You'd think of all people at Chesterfield Common Chairs would fight to spend the night in the wilderness. It's got to be better than a night out in Chesterfield. <laughs> I'm sorry I forgot to take the raffle tickets, Jesse. Oh, it's just as well. There was only two wanted to buy them anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that? That'll be Bert. He's just perfected a new version of the Mohican war cry. <laughs> Blood curdling, isn't it? Percy, quick. Bert's had an accident. <laughs> You remember Bert's whittling? Yes. He just learned a big lesson. Never do the Indian war cry with a toothpick in your mouth. Oh! 